Come in from the crisp morning air outside. Come in wearing the autumn sunlight on your face. Come carrying the turning of the seasons in your heart, whatever and however the greatness of life is speaking to you now. You are welcome here in our circle of friends. These words come from Sari Getty McNeil. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to People's Church. Whether this is your first time at People's Church or you come every Sunday or anywhere in between, I welcome you. My name is John McClellan, and I'm from the Sunday Services Committee. People's Church is a member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association and part of a tradition of liberal religion. Here, our mission is to be a beloved community, embracing and serving our diverse world. Please join me also in welcoming Dr. Charlay Davis, who will be speaking this morning. Welcome, everyone. And now we have some announcements. The RE Committee is excited to announce that they will be hosting a belated Halloween haunted potluck sleepover at the church on Friday, November 3rd. Jen Doxa will be available in the Commons after the service with sign-up sheets for families interested in attending and for grown-ups interested in volunteering to help. A Labyrinth Workday is happening today following the service. On Tuesday afternoon, our new book study on the inner work of age is meeting on Zoom. Check the church newsletter or weekly email for more information. Next Sunday, we are kicking off a fall stewardship campaign and we'll have a s'mores party after the service. Dress warmly and hope for good weather. And here's Emily with a few announcements related to the bazaar. Good morning, people's people and visitors. All right, it's the best time of year. We're getting ready for the bazaar. There's lots of opportunities for you to help this year. Um, the biggest thing is publicity, getting the word out there. We have a Facebook event that's been created. 
we're featuring specific artists on the regular, so if you're on social media, share, share, share. More importantly than that is you coming to the bazaar. Join us, come do your shopping. We have locally handmade toys for children, beautiful art. Um, all of our artists are from around town. They make things, we have recycled things. It's right up the people's people way of buying gifts. Bring your friends, spread the info. That's the number way to help us, number one way to help us. Um, a lot of things have changed, a lot of events are happening that day, this year, including the parade downtown, the KIA sale, there's a lot happening. So to get people in the door, we need your help. Personal invites work a lot better than a Facebook share, so ask your friends to come with you that day. It'll make a huge difference to the success of the church and the artists which really appreciate, who really appreciate it. Um, next is Rick's Riders. So if you don't know about Rick's Riders, Rick goes around town, hangs up our beautiful flyer um, at local businesses, and it really draws in a lot of people who are traveling around town, see our info, and come to the show. And I have not been a Rick's Rider before, but my husband was and said it was a lot of fun. So there's a sign up on the table and the foyer. I think it's running from the 23rd to the 26th. So maybe some car karaoke, I'm not sure, but I heard it's a really good time. So sign up for that. Um, next, there are the pasties. Pasties, I always say it wrong. <laughs> you know which one I'm talking about. Um, we need help making them after church, or bef no, it's the 21st. I think it's a Saturday, maybe? Nine to 12 in the, in the kitchen. We're looking for people to help put them together. It's a three hour good time. So see us at the table in the foyer, sign up for that. Um, the yard sign brigade, that's our next thing. If you, a little different this year, we're doing a sponsor a yard sign. So you can sponsor one for $25. And if you don't have the best place to put one, you live in a, community where it's not on a big road or things like that, that's okay. We're looking for sponsorship to up the amount of signs that we have. So again, in the foyer. Um, let's see, have you heard about the raffle baskets? This is, I'm just trying to get you guys excited because I've been doing the collecting of the donated items from the artists for the raffle baskets and you wouldn't believe how generous they've been. So look forward to that. It's gonna be a really good time. New, new thing for the bazaar. And lastly, we've got a sign up out. There are lots of sign ups out there, but there's another one for the mini cafe that we're having this year um, for vendors and volunteers that are working at the bazaar. And this would be a really great place for youth to sign up. We're not doing a specific youth sign up this year. So if you have any upper L middle school kids who are looking to help that day, have them sign up for the mini cafe or wherever you think that they would fit in. But all those sign ups are outside or out in the foyer. Um, you'll see me out there and Stormy, I think, and Donna will be at the table. So come say hi and see where your help might fit in. Thanks. Good morning, y'all. I invite you to rise in body or spirit to sing our opening song together. Trust the wisdom in each of us 
Come up to light our chalice. If you're lighting a chalice at home, you are encouraged to type in the chat box, a chalice is lit, in wherever you are. May we light this chalice this morning to remind us of the power and beauty of balance and contrast. It is darkness that can make the flame of a single candle so powerful, and light that deepens those shadows in turn. A chalice flame is the meeting point, the union of the refuge, safety and incredible beauty of darkness, and the warmth, the assurance, and the joy of light. May this act of lighting our chalice this morning remind us that we are stronger together in all the complexities and the disagreements of relationship, because we are different and because we are one. And let's see if we have any Zoom chalices. All right, we have a chalice lit in downtown Kalamazoo, a chalice lit in Portage, a chalice lit in Galesburg, a chalice lit in the Millwood neighborhood, and a chalice on Grand Prairie. Is everybody this morning good. you're good, good. tired good. <laughs> heard it tired all right so this story is written based on the title of another book you might see so if you can see my phone how many of you have ever seen this book it says good night moon <laughs> have you all seen this book before a lot of people have seen this book before so that book says good night moon but this book says good night racism what makes no sense maybe it'll make sense after we read the story huh? could you do me a favor could you hold that microphone right there for me yep. you have to hold it closer to my mouth so that we there we go so this book is called Good Night Racism. It's by Ibram X. Kendi, which some of your grown-ups might know that name. And it's illustrated by Kababi Bayok. And you can see the pictures up here, or and the grown-ups can see the pictures over here.
So it says, outside the window, peeking down from the night sky, the moon watches over us. She sees kids smiling at the dinner tables. Do you smile at the dinner table? And yawning in their beds. <coughs> but some kids do not have food, do not have beds, because of the unfair rules and unjust treatment. Do you know about any unfair rules? I'll bet you do. Yeah. Share those with your grown-ups sometime. The moon sees all kids, whoever they are, wherever they are, and shines her light on them. The moon wants her light to kiss every child good night. The moon delights when every child falls asleep. Because the moon knows when we sleep, we dream. What is this person dreaming about? Dancing. Dancing? Dancing. Giving a speech? The over -dober. Let's, yeah, say that again. The over -dober. Oh, yeah. They're saying that they might be giving a speech about the rights of black people. The over -dober. Okay. When we dream, we imagine what's possible what the world can be, and the moon glows a little brighter, whispering, dream, my child, imagine, my child, a new world, a new future awaits. A world where all people are safe, no matter how they look, How they worship, or how they love. Would it be nice if everybody could always be safe? Yeah, yeah that would be really nice, wouldn't it? A world where all kids have the same chance to have peace, to have joy, to have a childhood. A world where all people breathe fresh air and have what they need to feed their minds and bodies. A world where our rules open doors, open minds, and create equity and justice for all. Dream, my child. Create, my child. A new world, a new future awaits. So good night, unfair rules. Good night, cruelty. Good night, injustice. Good night, inequality. Good night, hate. Good night, hurt. Good night, racism. Good night. So thank you for coming and listening to this story, and hopefully you're learning new ways to say goodnight to all those things, too. And now it's time for you to go to your classes. Go forth in peace in search of wisdom with love.
The words for this morning's offering come from John Saxon. This religious community exists by its mission as a fire exists by burning. But a fire cannot burn without fuel. And it is the time, the energy, the imagination, the vision, the creativity, the compassion, the love, and the financial support of the members and friends of this community that fuels our mission to nurture and sustain a welcoming, inclusive, and diverse liberal religious community that transforms lives and serves the world. Your support, the free and generous support of each and every member and friend of this community is what fuels this community and its mission and without your support, the flame of justice, community, and love cannot burn brightly to warm ourselves and be a beacon in a world threatened by division and fear. The offering will now be received. Please join me in, in giving thanks from the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance. We bring these small portions to share in the works of love which none of us can accomplish alone. Each Sunday, we take a moment to share with one another the joys and sorrows, concerns and milestones in our lives. If you're here in person, feel free to come forward, state your name, put a, bowl in the or a pebble in the bowl of water, and speak briefly. If you are on Zoom, you can type your joy or sorrow into the chat box, and I will read it aloud. Um, and if you would just like a stone, just say the word or type the word stone and we will keep you in our thoughts. I invite you all to join me in song from your seats. From you. me. 
of our spoken meditation and the hymn Spirit of Life. Not to surprise you too much, but I would like to welcome Dr. Charlay Davis. <laughs> Greetings and love um, to you all, to Reverend Rachel, our Isaac clergy of the year this year. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and to my People's Church family, those who are here in the building and those who are joining us virtually, and you all again, congratulations as you all were awarded the Courage Award at our Walk, Run, Roll. So a special congratulations, yes. To you all, a special thank you to John and to Rick, all who are organizing today, um, the beautiful song singers, music, those who are doing the technology, those working with our children, and all of you all and our children as well. I am so happy to be here today, this Sunday morning. Just know that my heart is smiling. I hope that you can tell that my eyes are smiling. <laughs> and I am smiling smiling underneath this blue mask of mine. So I would like to take a moment here uh, just for another uh, moment of silence as we acknowledge the violence and the oppression abroad and the hatred and the violence and oppression in our country and the violence and oppression here locally. And may we lean into opportunities to support, hold space, hold prayers, comfort those who are impacted, and then for those who are survivors, those who are impacted, may we take care of ourselves. May we lean into silence just for a moment. Thank you. The last time I was here, I believe it was 2020. Uh, it was either January or February before the world shut down as we know it for this pandemic. I also was blessed to be able to join you all virtually a few times. And when I did you all, we talked about the beloved community. We talked about what it was. We talked about what it means. And then I remember asking you all the question, what are you willing to do to build the beloved community? We also talked about how building the beloved community is not always an easy task. When I talk about the beloved community, I get that warm, fuzzy feeling, but I have to be honest, when you're really building the beloved community, you are not always uh, faced with a warm, fuzzy feeling. And that's okay, that's okay. So today I just want to spend a little bit of time with you all talking about equity and why the presence of equity is so important when we are building the beloved community. So the first thing I would like you to do, if you did get the handout, if you didn't, no problem at all. But I'm looking at page one of that. Yes, you got it, thank you. Looking at that handout, um, and at the top it says equity versus equality. So before we even get started, we're just gonna go ahead and make sure that we have the same foundation here around um, definitions. And feel free to grab a, grab a sheet. They're outside by the programs. So equality refers to, and I'm gonna start with equality because I think that's what we're most familiar with. I'll just read it here. Equality refers to the principle of treating everyone the same or providing the exact same opportunities and resources to all individuals or groups, regardless of the need. It focuses on uniformity and equal treatment without necessarily considering the specific needs, circumstances, or historical disadvantages that certain individuals or groups may face. So that's equality, and that's usually what we're really familiar with. So on this left side here, equity, I'm just gonna read this quickly here. Equity refers to fairness and justice in the distribution of resources, opportunities, and privileges, taking into account the unique circumstances and needs of individuals or groups. 
It recognizes that different individuals and groups may require different levels of support or accommodations to achieve a level playing field. Equity aims to address historical and systemic disadvantages and achieve equality and, I'm sorry, equality of opportunity. So I want us just to hold those two definitions together. Next, and I'm still on page one there, I want us to revisit the beloved community as it was imagined by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So still on page one here. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke of the beloved community. He believed that the beloved community, while not devoid of conflict, was free of violence. And it was a place where our deepest values of abundance, equality, and I put equity in brackets, community, hope, and most of all, love, are infused in our policies and our practices. Why? So that every individual is held as beloved. Now, as we think about um, what Dr. Martin Luther King was talking about, thinking back to the civil rights movement, um, Dr. King was rightfully calling for equality. So going back to that, uh, that definition, sameness, equality. And if we revisit history briefly, we remember that segregation was lawful and it was enforced. So now I'm gonna ask you if you have the piece of paper, if you just turn over to that second page, you'll see some, well actually, is it on page two? Yes, okay. Nope, I'm sorry, stay on that page one. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So I want to just go through three of these images here. So this first one says, I'm going to read it, Imperial Laundry Company, we wash for white people only. That's the first image. This middle image, I'm gonna describe it. It has, it looks like two African Americans, an adult and a child dressed very um, fancy. And above them, you see a sign that says colored entrance. And as I'm reading that, just a, a gentle reminder, we don't use that word anymore. We say people of color, we say BIPOC, but I'm reading it um, as the picture shows. And then that last photo image right there, we have a drinking fountain and one says colored. And as you look at it, it's lower. So it takes a little more to go ahead and drink and right next to it the white drinking fountain so again in thinking about these are just a few images several images um, thinking about how segregation was lawful at this time these images are focusing on race yet we know for a long time and historically inequities have been based upon religion race and religion and gender and sexual orientation and language and ability and the list goes on and on and so at this time dr king and others were asking for equality because that was what was needed because there were some who were being denied the same that others were getting. So I wanna just put that there. Now, as we move a little forward, we see this progression, this outlawing of segregation, which is awesome. And so our next fight for justice or focus for justice is equity, you all. Because after years of oppression, we understand that there are different experiences, that some groups face different obstacles and very deep, currently deep disparities that certain groups are still experiencing years later. So equality, again, requires that every person or community receives the exact same resources or opportunities. And then equity, on the other hand, acknowledges that everybody did not start in the same place in life, and each individual gets what they need, even if it's more, or it's less, or it's nothing at the moment. It depends. So next, now it's time to flip your paper. <laughs> yes. All righty. So I want us to go a few the, through these images here. Uh, this first image, as you see it at the top, we see, um, I'm gonna start with the left here, it says equality. And there are three individuals and they're trying to look over at a baseball game, but there is a barrier for some. There's a barrier for some, and that barrier is the fence. And they each have one crate or one box 
that they can stand on to help them view the game. They each have a similar or equal support to view that baseball game. But even with that one box for each of them, only two can see or view that game. That's equality. Each have the same support, but not everybody can still see that game. As we see as this third individual here, the fence is in their way, they can't view the game. So let's go to the right, and we're talking about equity here. Same three individuals, still trying to view the game. The same barrier is there, that fence, yet person one needs no box, because without a box, they can still see over the fence. That second person, they have one box, and with that one box, they can see over that fence, they can view the game. And then that third person now has two boxes, and if you notice, that third person has their hands up because they can view the game, they can participate. And so this is equity. Not everybody got the same thing, but everybody got what they needed. And I have to point out in this picture that there was one individual who did not need anything. But thank goodness that individual didn't say, well, wait a minute, I want my box too, and took that box back because that third person would still not be able to see the game. Let's look at the second image here. And this is a bike ride. So in looking through a lens of equality, we're gonna start at the top here. We have four different bikes, and the bikes are all the same. And with that, we have an individual who is using a wheelchair. They're not able to access or ride that bike, so you see they're sitting off to the side. We have a second individual who looks to be very tall, long legs. It looks like they're struggling on this bike because they're bigger than this bike. That third person, it seems like the bike is a good fit. And then this fourth individual, they can't even sit on the seat because they're trying to reach the pedals. So this is not a good fit for this fourth person either. So now if we look through a, a lens of equity, we see that we don't need the same bike, but everybody needs a bike that works for them, a bike that fits them. And so this first individual, this is a bike, looks like a three wheel bike that works well, that's inclusive. And then also, there's a bigger bike for the second individual, for that person who has longer legs. Third individual was fine. And then a smaller bike for this other individual with shorter legs who's a little shorter. So everybody can participate effectively. That is equity. So now I wanna talk just verbally through a few scenarios, some personal and some social justice. And you can tell me if you would like to or think in your mind, it doesn't, it doesn't matter either way, which one we should look this through, equity or equality. So imagine you are a teacher, you have three students that come to you um, off of the playground and they say, oh my goodness, we have cuts and bruises. All right, as a teacher, you need to figure out what, what you're gonna do to help them out. One student has a cut on their finger, a smaller cut, but it needs to be taken care of. Then there's another student who has a medium-sized cut, you can't see my knee, but I'm, I'm patting my knee here, on their knee. That needs to be taken care of. And then you have that third student, the elbow and part of the arm, kind of a large bruise and cut, that needs to be taken care of. And so, question to you all, should we handle this, teachers, with equity, through a lens of equity or equality? I hear equity, and you're right. <laughs> Very good. So as we're thinking about this, you all, we don't want the sameness for both, for all students, all three students. We don't want us as teachers to put a Band-Aid on everybody's finger because everybody didn't have a cut on their finger. We also have to understand that maybe it's a smaller Band-Aid for the finger. I'm imagining maybe a medium-sized one, a different size one for the knee, maybe a larger one, maybe gauze is needed. We treat the individual or the group according to their needs, so not sameness. So very good. Next one here, thinking about public uh, transportation and accessibility. Currently, it's unlawful to segregate buses, which is awesome. 
But what about accessibilities? Do buses have accommodations for wheelchairs, accessibilities, or accommodations for individuals with different abilities, uh, those who speak different languages? What about those who may not earn enough to be able to ride the bus? Is this an issue of equality or equity? How should we look at it? Equity, I hear it, yes, say it loud and proud. There you go, you got it. And so if we think back, and think back to those pictures, I didn't put a picture in there, but the Montgomery bus boycott in the mid 50s, it was about equality, it was about sameness. Because individuals were saying, I want to be able to ride the bus, I don't want to have to sit in the back, or I don't want to have to stand um, if there's not room to sit down. So a little different, it's a different time. Last one here, housing. So even in Kalamazoo, and we've done uh, listening sessions and surveys, et cetera. Um, also, there have been studies, case studies, with different folks going in at different times to see if, if one group is discriminated against and not the other, which does happen. But we know here in Kalamazoo and elsewhere as well that a lot of times if folks have a past felony on their record that they could be denied housing. Not saying every landlord does that, but it has happened, unfortunately. Is this an issue where we need equality or equity? I'm hearing equity and ding, 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 you got it. And so for those of you who have heard about the housing equity ordinance, which was brought to us by Vice Mayor Patrice Griffin, um, that is something that helps decrease or encourages the uh, decreasing of discrimination and encourages landlords to ask questions. And so you don't want to just, if you have a felony, boom, you can't get housing, have that conversation. It encourages folks, have that conversation, learn about that felony, ask questions, because many times what we find is it's really, really old or they got it when they were younger. And we were in a listening session and this, this quote sticks with me, this older gentleman said, you know, I've been out for years and I'm still being convicted of that crime because I can't get housing. And so again, we don't need sameness, we need equity, meaning whatever that individual person needs. So in thinking about equity, we have to be honest about it. It's an ongoing thing. It would be nice if boom, it was there, it was done, everything was perfect, but that's not the world we live in. It's ongoing. And you might ask, well, what gets in the way of equity? I'll tell you. Fragility, at times, gets in the way of equity. The mindset of what about me? So going back to that picture of those looking over the fence, as I said, thankfully, that in first individual didn't say, well, what about me? Where's my box? I didn't get anything, right? And then also resistance, which can lead to backlash. In history, unfortunately, we have seen that sometimes groups who have been oppressed, when they start to get some things, then others say, well, what about me? I didn't get anything. They're taking away from me. And so then we start to see some progress and then unfortunately setbacks. But as we know, there is enough for us all. What do we need to do? We have to address and challenge this thinking because without equity, without true equity, we won't see what we desire. And I loved what I heard about the mission of People's Church to build that beloved community. And equity can get to the root of the social justice problems that we see. So that means you all that we have to listen to those who are impacted for what they need, believe them in their lived experiences. That means we have to advocate as an ally for others and for yourself as an impacted person. That means we have to be okay if we don't get extra or if there are some times where we don't get anything at all. If that means somebody who needs it is getting it. We have to be okay with that. In closing here, I invite you to close your eyes or you don't have to close your eyes just to focus on a point in the room just as we reflect here. Let us reflect on our community and all the things that we appreciate about our community, all the things that we love about our community, all the things that bless us in Kalamazoo County. And let us reflect on all the things that are causing harm, whether it's intentional or not, it's harm. 
and causing our community family members from living their best purpose-filled life. Let's reflect on that. And may we learn more. May we step out of our comfort zones and speak up unapologetically to advocate for equity for ourselves and for others. May we not accept injustices and just say to ourselves, that's just the way things are because that's not true. We're here to make that change together. And may we hold each other up because when we're building the beloved community, you all, I said, it's not always warm and fuzzy. We get tired, we get exhausted, we get discouraged. May we hold each other up and remind each other we can do this together. And may we remember that if one of us is not okay, all of us are not okay. You all, there is much work to do, and I have much hope and faith that we're gonna do it together. Thank you, and I love you, my, my People's Church family, so much, thank you. All right, I invite you all to rise and body your spirit to sing our closing song together. Our closing words come from Robin F. Gray. As we prepare to depart, we give voice to these hopes. May we know ourselves bound in community, even while we are apart. May a passion for justice burn in our lives. May we carry the light of compassion in our hearts and in our every interaction. May we be whole in our devotion to truth and always carry the lamp of peace before us. Go now in peace. <laughs> <laughs>